interstellar Borisov comet, latest, is now passing between Mars and Earth orbits. It will be observable by, okay, get out your telescopes. And what we know so far, as we know, this was discovered, shockingly, by an amateur astronomer, not by uh, any uh, space agencies, NASA, ESA, or whatever. It's an interstellar comet. And scientists, astronomers, are really excited about this. They're really pumped up. According to space.com, Megan Bartel says, and there, I'll leave a link because they have an amazing uh, orbital path of it as it comes by us now, where it came from and as it's going out. Uh, they, of course, assume that it will be going out. Now, the thing is this. This is the second one since the Umwamwa interstellar comet came to us at uh, 2017. And why are the, from interstellar space, why all of a sudden are we getting interstellar, interstellar celestial bodies coming at us? Is there another solar system, another planetary system that close to us that it's losing its comets? and asteroids or whatever they are and they're coming towards our solar system the question is what is out there so close to us that it's losing objects and we are attracting them here this is this is a this is very worrying and uh we already know of the certain celestial bodies that it will be coming at us so the apophis and the bennu asteroids and we have our asteroid missions unfortunately not all the uh it should be an international project to protect our planet Earth. It isn't, unfortunately. And this is just one more reminder that that should be the priority of Earth. Really. Now, Karen Meech would not credit Comet C219-24 with good timing, but when astronomer has a chance to study this first known interstellar comet, and then, of course, uh, it calls for major conferences. Meech is just one of the astronomers who rushed to ask for time using instruments on Earth and uh, in its orbit to study a major cosmic celebrity, the bright fuzzy dot in the sky. She and her colleagues uh, are confident the first interstellar comet. It has a tail, by the way, and it's known to scientists just as the second interstellar object. This is following the Umwamwa body uh, that some people that came at us in 2017 and uh, we didn't have that much time to study it as it was coming into us. We, we even had scientists from Harvard claiming that it could have been an ET spacecraft. Now uh, this one however is compared to the first one we had difficulty says effectively a week to observe it uh, she's at the University of Hawaii who made critical observations of Umwama. She says, so you had to write your proposals, observe, get the observations down, reduce data. We managed to pull together a paper in a week, but this one we have luxury and lots of time. So, the c 21924 is this one here, the Borisov comet. Borisov is the man who, um, in, on August 30th, Gennady, Gennady Borisov, with his small telescope, trained at the horizon, close to the sun, saw this coming in. He's from Crimea, and that's where he spotted it. It's perhaps the first irony of eagerly awaiting interstellar object. He's a scientist organized surveys searching the skies for such a thing. They would not have spotted the object nearly as quickly since they don't examine the sky so close to the sun. Well, why not? That's where the other one came from, the one that hit Chelyabinsk. They said that came from behind the sun and they didn't notice it. So after Chelyabinsk meteor hit Russia, uh, damaging, uh, what, 7,000 buildings, no, uh, injuring 1,500 people, damaging 7,000 buildings, broken glass and things, why, you would think that they would have their telescopes trained around the, uh, the uh, area of the sun. Now, why did, that's another question, why did Yenadi Borisov 
point his telescope around the sun? Was it perhaps because a lot of our YouTube friends notice that there are certain objects around the sun? You know, interplanetary systems, uh, systems that are coming in every few thousand years, things like Wormwood, Planet X, Nibiru, Nemesis, whatever you want to call it, something that keeps coming around. There are people that are submitting uh, in, um, photos and images, other people that are observing things around the sun. And he just happened to have his amateur telescope trained there, pointing there. And that's how he found it. And that's why the space agencies did not find it, because they don't have their telescopes pointing to the sun. Why not? The Chelya beings came from behind there, and you said, well, we didn't see it, we didn't notice it, because we didn't have our telescopes pointed towards the sun. What can I tell you? Even they have Ho Soho, they have all these other telescopes, of course, always giving us images and videos of the sun. That's hard for me to accept that they don't have telescopes pointing towards the sun. That's my opinion. Now, I'm not uh, an astronomer. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, there are people that are very careful to find out what's happening around the sun. And Yanadi Borisov, he got his uh, this interstellar comet uh, named after him. So, um, that's why scientists are not able to see these things. But with small telescopes, they say you can point as close to the horizon as you wish. So anyone that has that sort of telescope can easily observe it now because it's now coming between us and Mars. Meech said the really big telescopes that you would want to use to do the science have pretty significant limits of how close the horizon to, to the horizon it can point because they can't move down that way. So many of the big ones can't get to it until, of course, mid to late October. Now, the telescopes in the northern hemisphere will be able to study this comet in January, but by then it will be past us. That's when the southern hemisphere instruments will take over, and by October 2020, it will be nearly impossible to spot this because it will be speeding past the sun on its way to visit another world. However, Yanadi Borisov, the amateur astronomer from Crimea, was able to spot it on August 30th, and he posted, posted the news of this sighting on an astronomy forum. He and others observed this thing coming in, and they calculated suggesting that the orbit might arc across our solar system, not loop endlessly through it, and it prompted cautious interest among scientists, Meech said. And uh, we have the first color image of comet C219Q4 that was captured on 9th, 10th of 2019. It has a tail. It was captured by Gemini Observatory NSF Aura, and thanks to Yenadi Borisov, the amateur astronomer, the uh, uh, big uh, space agencies can now image it. Now, uh, Meech and her colleagues caught this on the nights of September 8th to 10th by the Canada France Hawaii Telescope on Mauna Kea in Hawaii. And by September 11, the Minor Planet Center monitoring these things will, was willing to conclude that the information suggests that the object likely came from beyond our solar system, interstellar. If it confirms the conclusion, the object's name will be adjusted to begin with 21, marking the second interstellar object discovered and Meech says, but our team internally is 100% convinced. And she says that they're also, they also confirmed it really is a comet, unlike Umwamwa, which faced uh, an identity crisis. Astronomers uh, thought it could even be you know, an extraterrestrial craft of some kind. Because uh, anyway, they weren't sure. But this time, they are convinced. And to find the first one not to have a tail, this is... Definitely, this one definitely has a tail, and it's a comet with a tail. Now, um, the scientists were thrilled when Umama passed, of course, with this strange, elongated, weird shape, looking like a spacecraft. 
So, uh, but they couldn't see any gas or dust emitted by the object, which is usually done by a comet. So what kind of material was it made of? Um, now the astronomers here are beginning to uh, be able to analyze proportions in other solar systems, but it's the equivalent of trying to reconstruct a precise taste of well-spiced curry based on Fran's description of a long-ago meal. But anyway, um, they're trying to put everything together, and uh, they've uh, been handed a couple of objects now that had been ejected from those disks that we can study, she says, close up like we do in our solar system, and that's great. Now, how big is this? This thing? Meech and her colleagues saw the comet's tail, and it stretched for 93,000 miles, that's 150,000 kilometers, into space. But it's more difficult to estimate the size of this because it's got all this stuff around it, dust and uh, debris and everything. And they, you know, it's difficult to measure what exactly is the main body, how big is it. The team made a primary, primarily, primary est estimate that the object is between anywhere between 1.2 and 10 miles across. That's 2 to 16 kilometers. That's a big difference, as you can see. And the calculation relies on estimates of brightness of the comet in the images. And they applied a model built on several assumptions having to do with, you know, the tail and everything. So that is a big question, how big it is. Meech said, everybody's been scrambling to write a pro uh, proposals. We've milked the one data point to death. All right. So I'll leave links below so you can watch the path of this. It's, uh, as we said, the comet tail stretching 93,000 miles, and it's 1.2 to 10 miles across. More of this soon enough. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.